Hey everyone, so happy Saturday. We are back. I'm back from my trip. Thank you for everyone who sent um, well wishes while I was, you know, foraging around in the Rocky Mountains. It was a lot, a lot of fun. Learned a lot. And um, yeah, so that one, it was a nice, it was a nice break in nature like that. I really was revitalized. Though I really found like when I came back, you know, home back into my studio, I was like still kind of moving around at that mountain pace. So <laughs> it's like I'm getting I'm getting back into the groove of it all. So lots to do today. And um, so but what I was thinking is that um, let's first talk about week 28. Tell you what our prompt is. This is a really easy, cool one because we're halfway through believe it or not this is like amazing and so week 28 I've titled calming winds so as we move into the second half of our year and certainly as you stay the course with personal work in your art mythos journal I think you are arriving at a place where the winds of change have begun to calm you because we've done a lot right there's been a lot of ups and downs a lot of discoveries a lot of new thinking different techniques just staying in the groove of getting the journal going all the time and so many of you reach out and tell me uh, how that journey has been going for you all and so I think you're probably like just kind of starting to kind of to start to coast now like you're going okay I'm getting into my groove around this journaling getting the prompts you know the way your week has been going so that's a good feeling and moving into to a space of self-recognition and acceptance with empowerment and relief in the knowledge that the way you create and the things that you are passionate about are perfect for you and I think that's a big thing out here in the community and especially on YouTube where you see so many artists and so many people are doing things and so many techniques and it can be like overwhelming like oh my goodness am I good enough do I really know what I'm doing you know I do enjoy this but oh is anybody gonna like it I feel like you know our having gone through this first half of the year probably has begun to start taking a lot of that anxiety away and even a lot of those questions you are perfectly doing exactly what you should be doing the way you're doing it just having fun and just making it an enjoyable process not comparing but realizing that it's because of our unique differences that make us artists right and so this is it's this place of just feeling like oh, you can just take a deep breath so take time this week as you work in your journal to take note and jot down new revelations that you have had regarding your artwork so just enjoy and have fun. So that's this week's prompt. It's all about just being reflective. Just, you know, like as things come up for you, the things you've enjoyed, the revelations you've had, it's just all about that. And just so just make notes, jot them down, put it in your in your book, in your journal here. Just have fun with it. This is the July printables, which are lots of mark making. So I decided since everybody was really enjoying the mark making and um, it's one that I get asked about a lot is mark making. And it's, you know, it's one that I really haven't thought a lot about because I really, I guess I've been doing mark making for so long, but I can't understand how it's challenging and how like to get the variation in mark and how is it, you know, how do you do it? And that's a big part of like just getting at a, a, to a sweet spot with your mark making. So I thought it would be fun to put a collection or 18 prints in here of a lot of my mark making that I felt was like generic. These are the ones that are done with my stencils. I tried to pick ones that were like more generic so that you can like really integrate them in with your work easily. You can take and mark make over them and integrate your line with my line. There's a lot of ways to use these. So a lot of you've already started buying them because I think you all just know that the beginning of the month, uh, the um, the printables are going up. And you guys just go over there and start getting them before I even say anything. But yeah, so there's 18 pages of these. And I thought we would work with these in a really neat style. Um, that's one of the styles that I do, do a lot in my journal, in, in my um, Jelly Junkadori. And I've shown you before. So we're going to do like mini collages. So we're going to like kind of work with the idea of actually making a piece of art the concept of it as a mini collage in our journals okay so it's going to be like along the lines of these type of 
images. In fact, the one that really inspired me, um, well, I've been doing, th this one I've been doing in the journal. I'm going to show you. So this was last week's, what we did on Patreon, um, the daydreaming. And I was inspired by these pages in my Jelly Junkadori. But what we're going to work on today is going to be kind of more of this kind of art page with using um, printables. I mean, yeah, using mark making. So, but let me show you what last week's, um, do a quick flip through. So, so I was doing this, I, the, um, I periodically circle back around to mail art and, um, the idea of like Nick Bantock and Leonor Tani and a few things. First of all, a couple of house, a little housekeeping. I'm gonna put the link before below, but the Jelly Printing 101 um, is gone live. So sign up. You can sign up. This it's gonna be a live session on Zoom at the end of the month. So it's gonna be July 25th. A Sunday it's a Sunday um, and the link is down there and so it's gonna be we're gonna be on zoom together we'll you'll be able to show me your work we can talk back and forth if you want to if you don't want to you don't have to turn your camera on but if you want to have your camera on we'll be able to interact with each other that way you can sort of show me I, I'm gonna be going through a number of techniques but I thought it'd be cool because you can kind of show me maybe what's not working or you can have some questions or like a, you know like where you can be interactive and I maybe can help you solve some of the challenge you may have already had with jelly printing so people have already started to sign up for that if you've been on my mailing list you would have already gotten that but if not um the link will be below the video it's um just forty dollars we're going to do four hours of my four basic techniques i'm going to take you starting at a logical place on the plate and i'll show you how you can add each technique on in a printing session so we're going to do that that's going to be fun. And also the altered book is done. <clears throat> I have it right here. I love it. So Passport to Distant Lives. Here's our book. And it really came out beautifully. Oh, I mean, I just have gone through it a number of times. It's just so, um, just a beautiful coffee table like book. Like I could just sit here and flip through it. It's really nice. Oh boy, I was really pleased with the printing on it and everything. So this, I'll put the link below for um, for this. It's going to be a pre-sale, so I'm only doing it as a pre-sale. You're going to have a month to to um to sign up for it, um, and when I close it. I'll order the books and then everyone will get, um, it'll be numbered. So let's say if, you know, 150 people bought books, then it'll be like one of 150, two of 150. And I'm going to do it in the order that the orders were placed because my, um, the website will be able to track the exact order that the order, the, the number that the orders came in. And that will be the number that you will get in the series, right? So I'll have the series on it. Um, I'll sign it, date it. So they're all going to be personalized and then I'll ship them out to everyone. So it'll be like, and once those are, once we close it, I'm not going to print that book again. It will not get printed again. Um, that way it stays special. It's like a one off, a one of a kind collector's book um so that's that link will be below too yeah those are the two things that are happening this month i'm so excited and my stencils are going to be released but that'll be at the end of the month as well and i will give you um information as we get a little closer but i think that launch date is going to be the 22nd through the 27th and there'll be a free a free stencil again that you get um during that promotional period when you purchase a certain amount. But I've just given you guys all the housekeeping. So look for the links below for the altered book. I know you all have been waiting for that one. And it is gorgeous. I really am. I didn't know that I was even going to like it as much. I thought I would have to send it back a few times. But only had to do it once. So that was good. Um, and of course the, um, the Jelly Printing 101. That's going to be a lot of fun. So many people have already signed up for that one. So it's going to be a good, good session. Okay, I think that's everything. So let's look at our pages. Um, 
So I did it in the style of, so what, what made me think of it was the altered book when I talked about it because this book, this entire book was done in the Nick Bantock, Leonor Tawney style of, um, of mail art. So the idea of creating images that use stamps and labels and just, you know, sort of had this idea of passport to distant lives, of traveling, that kind of thing. So... Yeah, you can sort of see the style here. And um, so that's what got me to thinking about it. And I got back to um, really enjoying that style this week with um, the daydreaming. So it was just like easy, just kind of hanging out and creating um, this sort of mail art images using napkins prints that I had, stamps, labels, napkins. I think that really came out when I really like the way that looks. So yeah, this is what last week's looked like. And now we're going to move along into um, this week's using the printables and the idea of collage art. I think that's everything, so let's go down to the table. Okay, so here we are. So what I'm going to do is going to start off with an old book page. These are old book um, pages that I recently got when I was in Santa Fe. I hit a few flea markets and stuff and actually got a nice little chunk of old books. I think I always like the gold gilding on the side of the pages. But um, I think this book is like 1800s or something. It's like 1870s or something. So I like the, the paper and the color on it. So what we're going to do is, what I like to do is glue this down first. But what we're going to do is we're going to make it fit within the page. And oftentimes I use pages as a beginning for my collage. Because first of all, they're already, they are vintage, right? So you get that nice um, old world and I save these because those I use in collage because that that old paper and that color is just perfect for. So what I'm doing is I'm tearing within about, what is that, a fourth of an inch? About a fourth of an inch or maybe a little less around all the sides. So that way I get a nice tight bit of... Um, A text block. I'm gonna keep the heading and everything on that, but okay. So see how that'll look. That'll be just nice right there in the middle. And then we're going to collage over it and around it. You know, I me. Mean, I really did like the way that um Okay, let's just, don't get ahead of yourself, Robin. So let's start off by getting this one down. So I'm going to go ahead and um, glue this to the page. This was Comic History of England, was this what this book was about. So it's like a lot of cartoon type of thingies in here, sort of, car you know, caricatures. Of historical things but it's kind of weird because it's like serious history stuff like this one is on Joan of Arc and everything where somebody like the the prison guard is coming in checking on her in her cell and she's like no something is weird but it's kind of like not a funny thing <laughs> I mean you know Joan of Arc so I guess it was kind of like I guess you had to be there you know those times So anyhow, but they're neat. It's fun. Okay, so here, a lot of that's going to get covered up. So the way I start off is I put something like this down. And now I'm going to, so there's two ways we can do it. We can put it down right on your book page like that and then start working Um. I'm gonna figure out if I'm gonna do the same thing there or not. But let's just get this part going. So you get the idea of how we're gonna work in here. 
So now what we want to do is just kind of start. What I like to do is just. I think I'm going to work with this one. So what we're going to do is kind of work within this. The boundaries of that page size. So I use that, you know, like a lot of times when I'm working, I'm going to, um, oops, I sort of use that as a, let me just cut this off. So I really like the idea. Those of you who have purchased my collages before you've seen that firsthand, how like I'm using kind of work within so let's see where I want this to be. I think I'm going to do this like about right there. So let's take this amount off here. And I like that, like that. So about, so you just can kind of figure, you know, sort of like this. And then I'm going to flip it over. It's easy for me. Well, since I'm working inside the book, it's easier for me to flip it and get the similar amount on this side. Okay. Save all those pieces are good. Okay, so now this is what I think I'm going to do. So then when I'm going to put this in like about right there and just leave a little bit of the text showing. So I'm going to leave a little bit of the text showing. So let's go ahead and Go ahead and glue this up put this down this is the first part and I'm just I'm still doing an intuitive collaging so even when I'm doing my my fine art you know or you know more of the abstract expressionist style of collaging where I'm just letting my emotions and the images sort of build the story for me I'm still just kind of you know, just allow myself to be inspired. So I want a bit of that text down there. So I like that. Okay. See how good that looks already with like the text block and okay. So now what we want to do is let's look for something. I'm just kind of seeing what I want to put down. Alrighty, okay, so camera needed to need to get new um space on my disc. <laughs> so okay, but I'm kind of just still fooling around with I like this. So you're gonna see where I'm gonna go with this. So I'm just kind of showing you how I build information. I like this. I think I'm gonna wanna put Okay, so let's just go ahead and let me see. Let me rip a bit of this. Kind of want it to be subtle. Let's see if we kind of put this down in there like that. So when so that when we put this down, we see some more mark making like underneath this bit. Okay, so let's uh let me go ahead and Tear that. And let me try to rip this bit off so I can get a similar kind of edge. I could also use my water brush as well. This is tearing really good, so. Okay, so that's good. So I think that's going to get down in here. So that, um, thinking about that. So now let me kind of go and pull some more of the elements I'm thinking about using. Let me see here. This one I want. I definitely like the, the coffee stained one. Let me just see. I'm reaching over here in my drawer because may have some more stained 
elements maybe not if not here I think I may have some in this drawer so this is the process I go through so um, a lot of times I'm working and I'll pull out a bunch of stuff like I just did but then when I start working I start thinking like okay um, I think I want a little bit of this a little bit of that that I know that I have you know among my my papers and I just allow myself to be inspired and kind of move through the process. So I want some of the older color papers. Okay, so I think what we're going to do here is I like this. I'm going to... Let me flip it this way. So we're going to... So I'm going to have that kind of go up to the top, maybe something like that, and leave some of the page and the name. It says, well, maybe I don't want that. I might end up taking that part off because it says Joan, a prisoner. <laughs> Sometimes I ought to watch what the heads of things say because they may not really be really going with what I'm feeling. But I do like, I like sometimes seeing the chapter and the page number. So then I'll just, you know. Okay, so wait a minute. I don't want that. I'm going to lose that little bit of gold, so I'm going to just cut it across. Because I want a straight edge, basically. So that when we go to put this down, the whole idea is that I wasn't planning on, you know, keeping this covered up, right? I'm going to put that down. Something like this. I'm going to get a similar edge of this on this side okay so let's go ahead and just pull some of this so we get some some stringy stuff hanging out on this side of the of our okay so now let's see if this goes down here well I like that and then this is going to be like right about in there so we can see I think I'll just, gosh, I, I don't want to lose, but it'll be okay. Do something like that. See how we're coming along, how that collage is just really pulling together. And let me just see, what do I want to do? I have so many goodies. <laughs> in this drawer but I want to figure out I want something like maybe something like this a little kana versus the kanji oh that's nice maybe something like this I like this color too so let me just go ahead and pull a piece of this because what I'm what I like to do now is just kind of get everything sort of figured out in terms of placement and then just kind of have it all figured out let's see maybe I want a shorter let's try this one this is from a very old uh, Japanese book. A lot of this, these books were gifted to me by one of my patrons. Oh my goodness. Talk about my love language. She just said she had so much of it. that She had collected over the years. And once she became a patron, she was like, Hey, you're doing so much good stuff with this. I'm going to gift you with it. And she gave me a bunch of it. So I love using this in collages. And it's just all really one-off one beautiful. See, so I can use that to kind of join it together. You see what we're getting there? So Something like that. I think I'm liking this a lot. So let's go ahead and start getting this amount committed. Okay, so first I need to glue this 
and figure out exactly where this is going to go in. This paper right here is just pa this um, paper that looks like this. You can find this at a lot of places where they have um, paper from India and from Asia. I think I want to say that I think I got this from Blick. And so if you have a Blick store near you or Blick online, you can find them. And sometimes there's companies that just have a lot of the Asian papers and things like mulberry paper. That might be one of the names you'll find it under. So I like that there. So yeah, just this, this stuff you can find and see how like nice that line works with my line. So these are for my stencils and that really does a good job of mimicking it, it uh, mimicking it. So now we can get this down. Okay, so so we're gonna glue this up. I'm using the Giotto because I know this is a good strong glue, and it's gonna glue this this piece of paper down that has a lot of fibers in it, and it's also archival. It dries clear, so it's really good for your you know your collages. Let's get this down. I'm going to end up covering that up. Oh, I can, I'll be able to see the page a little bit and the chapter. I didn't want that Joan a prisoner thing going on. I don't think that's, <laughs> that's not the message of this collage. <laughs> okay. So, so see how it just goes down and we're going to see you see the book page underneath, but it's not like, you know, it doesn't become the focus of the collage where, you know, you're going to read it. And look how that just pops out so nicely. But when you put it closer, you can just see, if I get it close, you guys can see like all the texture. Let me kind of get the right angle. The texture of the page, that paper we put down. Now, let's get this. Because this piece is going to go right across the middle here. And it'll act as a nice bridge. It acts as a bridge and also just, it, for me, everything's about layering. So as I can continue to layer in my collage, that was that you know that really makes me happy. But at the same time, using translucent, transparent, translucent pieces are good because you're not covering up what's underneath. You're just kind of adding texture so you can see where we can sort of still see under it but we've gotten some texture added so now what I would like to do is I really wanted to take a circle from from this paper I had where is where did I just put oh here it is it slid onto the floor I want to figure out how to I don't know these might oh you know what I can grab the center let's try this one let's just take this so I was saying these circles are kind of big for this collage let's see what we can, if we grab in the middle what how we can use this and so that's what I start doing so it's like beginning to mirror can I mirror oh yeah see we can mirror so we can begin to mirror this circle here um, by playing with this and seeing how much of this we want to cover up And I may not even want to use this because this may be a little bit too big, but I have a smaller fragments piece. Let's see if we can. Oh, yeah. Let's integrate this piece. <clears throat> this piece, I love using this paper, but I don't really want to cover all of this up too much. But I want to knock it back a little bit more because I don't really want to see, still see as much of this book page. And I don't mind if this goes down a layer as well. I'll still see it. Where this, once I glue it down, you'd be surprised of how much you're going to see of what's underneath it. 
but I feel like it's just a disjointed item where I, like this is but this white jelly printed piece that comes from I, I call it fragments it's so how to jelly print so in the course that I'm going to be doing jelly printing 101 I'm gonna start off with the basics of how to do several different type of techniques on your plate I didn't expect to talk about this but I'm talking about it since I'm doing this um how to like you know start with color texture how to build up use your plate and how to get a number of different techniques out of your jelly plate during a printing session versus going to it and saying oh I'm gonna try to do the glazing and oh I want to do old wall like sometimes what I a lot of times what I do is in a session I'll get a number of different styles out in that session you know what I mean and then I'll have different um then they just I just put them into my stash right and I have different things to work with when it's time when it comes time for me to want to work with them and it's a good way to work because the way I even discovered all the different techniques that I use is because the plate will start give generating different types it'll kind of um, create the environment um, conducive for certain styles during your printing session so that's what I'll be showing this kind of way of sort of building upon techniques so you, you get a, a number of different techniques out of one printing session. But then I'll be doing, oh, I like that one. See, now we get this circle. So we're kind of mimicking it, but see in a much more subtle way. Now I am going to take, so this is white paint on, on tissue paper, but I'm going to take this center out. So using my, you know, this brush pen, it's like really one of the best ways to tear paper and especially like really thin paper like this tissue paper tears just like beautifully and you can go right up to the paint because the paint will resist a bit the water so you don't have to worry about tearing your um your image because it'll resist the water a bit and you can kind of get close to it so this is a, a technique that i do call fragments and i'll be doing a few different jelly printing uh, series just to kind of work everyone along with different techniques but this is one of them so now this I got like my fingers are full of glue so let's see where we want to put this maybe something like this where we'll overlap Let's see. So we're going to kind of overlap this circle and circle into this area here. And we can still see what's underneath it. I like that. The only thing I need to get rid of is Joan the prisoner. We don't like that. So I have a, this little strip right here that I think is going to be perfect, actually, to put right across the top. And... Um, get rid of that and still keep it be in keeping with our theme of this collage so see this will be nice and we can put it right across there which is perfect and we still see the page number the chapter number and I like that okay I like this okay so now we're gonna go ahead and finish this piece by I'm gonna use my Giotto again. No, I think I'm gonna use the Yuhu because the Yuhu, the Uhu, I guess it's really Uhu, is um, smoother. It's not as sticky and as tacky as the Giotto. So when you're working with thinner papers like this tissue paper, you want something that's just gonna roll on there and not tear our paper. But it's still archival and it still really does. Let me stand up so I can get this right. Um, sort of something like this. Just kind of seeing from side to side if I like that. Okay. And 
and it's amazing on this tissue paper this goes down so nice and smoothly that it looks like you just jelly printed right on it but yet you controlled it so can you imagine trying to jelly print on this after you've done it and like it not get positioned right or something so i like the way it looks like this circle is just moving right up out of this circle and everything is just really harmonious i like that so now we just need to glue this piece here so using some more of the, the uhu because it's perfect for this really thin delicate paper this paper is very delicate and my sticky fingers don't help let's just get that covered okay perfect so there we have it a nice collage <laughs> from you know and using starting with some mark making um is is nice or any jelly print you may have as a foundation you really see how it's nice working on top of the old book pages so any old book pages you already have just go through your library you may have books sitting up on that shelf that you've forgotten about and by now they're aged and they have that nice old page look to them and you're not going to read it again you don't have any problem with you know tearing it up i mean i buy books specifically like this one that we're using here to to use in my collages so I feel like a lot of times people say, oh, that book, you know, it's expensive. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes they are. But just think about the fact that you're making collages that if you sold, if you sold every collage that you made out of a book like this, let's just say, you know, with the old papers and you use it as a foundation, you use it in your work. It's like 300 and something pages in here. Oh, I didn't even see this. This was inside of your old... Uh, old receipt for newspaper Pasadena Star News <laughs> person's name was Richardson where they um, 1922 where they put the receipt for their newspaper in here how cool is that um, anyway but let's say oh did you guys see that I was so busy looking at it could you see it I'm a little bit off camera it was this little pleasant because I just got this book so that's in there like a receipt from 1922 for the Pasadena Star News um, so let's say for every one of these pages and that this is what I want to just kind of help with the, the mindset of like using vintage or antique books so let's say this book I mean I paid I don't know I, I bought a whole box of books and they were all old and I got them for a really good price I think I paid like 30 something 40 dollars for this box of books like five or six books that were like 1800s so I got a good deal on them but sometimes I don't sometimes I get a book and I'm paying 40 or 50 dollars a book but I really like that book and I want to be able to use it in my work well just think if I made uh, used one sheet out of the book to do a collage and let's just say I sold the collage for $25 I'm going to get more out of the book selling it using it in my art and have a vintage papers have something authentic and what have you than what I paid for the book or even probably what the book is worth I mean you could even have a book worth three or four or five hundred dollars but if you if you're using it in your artwork and you're selling your artwork for a hundred two hundred dollars a piece you can see pretty quickly your artwork is going to outpace the value of the book. So I always like to point that out to people because my background, like you guys know, is in anthropology and archaeology. And my very first job, it was in um, with an a antique store doing provenances. And that's like taking a piece of art or furniture or vase or rug and doing the research to find out the history of it you know the provenance of it and then I would write those up and the gallery owner would have them to be able to talk about the piece when a person was interested in it and I'm telling you I'm pretty good at you know so I have an appreciation for old things and keeping things intact and all of that um, but I can tell you that if you're using these things in your art and you're reselling them and you're using or you're just doing them for your own pleasure and putting them on the wall 
Um, don't let the fact that you may have something vintage to hold you from using it. Like I have, not to be able to show you even all of it, but like I have a drawer full of all these beautiful paper, old, old books. I mean, these things are old that um, my patron gifted me. Look at all of them. I mean, and you could just keep these in a nice little pile and never use them because they're old. I mean, I started taking them apart and using them in my work. Because, like, let's just reuse stuff and enjoy them. And, you know, so I just like to have a little conversation. Because sometimes people really cringe at, oh, my God, you're tearing up a book. But, no, we're, re we're creating art with it. <laughs> and the art has value. And most times it has more value than the book. So this one is done. Oh, I love it. I just love collaging like this because I never know what I'm going to walk away with. But. I love this one. Okay, so that's everything for this week. Remember, we're just, it's the calming winds. Just take the time to sort of, you know, think through, you know, all of your, um, you know, what we've done for the first half of this year as we move forward. Just be reflective. Maybe play with doing some small collages like this in your book and outside, you know, just, um, Maybe you come across a few that you really love and you want to just frame and put them on your wall and to mark this half year point of journaling, of being reflective. Maybe you might put your own, some of your quotes, your thoughts or something on um, your artwork as well. Maybe that, maybe one of your quotes or one of your thoughts or aha moment becomes the title of your work. A lot of times my work gets titled based on my journey, where I am at that moment, what I'm reflecting upon. So there's a lot here, a lot here to work from. You guys have lots of fresh inspiration just by going back through your journals and flipping through and letting that be a source of inf inspiration for, um, for, you know, where you are right now. Um, spend time flipping through your journal and become reflective this week. And, you know, jot those things down. Alrighty. I'll let you guys go. This has been a lot of fun hanging out with you as always. And um, look below the video for all the different things that, that's happening this month. And I'll keep you updated on them all. And yes, if this is the first time, you know, you come across my channel, please, uh, you know, click the subscribe button, <coughs> excuse me, and hit that bell so you'll get notifications all the time because otherwise you won't get them. Join our community. And for all of those of you who are, you know, um, OGs, <laughs> we've been hanging out for a while. Thank you so much. And make sure to hit the, the button, you know, thumb it up because that's how YouTube pushes it out. So more people will join our community and find what we're doing. Love you guys. Take care. Have a really great week. And I will see you again next Saturday. Lots of love. Bye-bye.